morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. All right. We're going to start this morning off and sing hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus. Everyone stand with me. Oh, shake hands this morning.
excited to be here this morning to worship Christ and to study his word. Say glory. glory. Wow, that was much better than when you try to say hi or hello or good morning. Very good job. Hey, if you're visiting with us, we're glad that you're here with us this morning as we do worship our Savior and we study his word of truth. Uh, some announcements to bring to your attention. We have several, so I'm just going to read them. Uh, we normally, on the first Sunday of the month, have what we call First Fruits of Prayer, where we gather together as a church body and just pray corporately. Uh, this first Sunday coming up in November is going to be a little different. Uh, I want to meet with our missions team. Uh, if you don't know who you are, I will be sending a text to you shortly, but I think most people do because you said yes when I said, are you going to be on it? Uh, but we're going to have a vision conference where we're going to Pray and seek God and really kind of discuss how we as a church in our context are going to fulfill the Great Commission. Now, that's predominantly for the missions team, but if you want to be a part of that, if you want to participate in that, I want to invite you to come do that as well. We're not going to have our normal service time, so, so don't be coming at 530. We're going to start at 430, and that's going to go until uh, we feel like we're done. So if you want to be a part of that process of seeing the vision that God would have for our church and discussing avenues and ways and open doors and things that he would lead us into uh, as we go out into all the world as the scripture commands us to preach the gospel. Uh, come, that'll be the first Sunday of November. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing there and that's listed there in your bulletin. Uh, I want to thank everyone who helped with food or, or the funeral as we had it uh, this last week for Miss Mary Galen. Thank you for your service and your time. Also, Operation Christmas Child is going on right now. We still have lots of boxes, so come get your boxes. Those will be due November 13th. Trunk or Treat is going to be Saturday, October 29th, beginning at 6 p.m. Uh, it'll be sort of in the Life Center and around as we'll have some trunks and other things going on as well. So come uh, be a part of that. We have a sign-up sheet in the foyer, so please sign up to either have a trunk or host a game or, or do something. If you have any questions about what you could do, uh, you can talk to Miss Molly, and she will get you lined out. Or Miss, who are you pointing to? Tabitha, you're in charge of it this year? All right, so never mind. Forget Molly. Go to Tabitha. I'm sure she's very excited for that, so, uh, so do that. If you have questions about Operation Christmas Child, I know Miss Molly's doing that, so you can bother her about that. So just make sure you go and burden her with that. That'll be good. Uh, Lawson Baptist Church, our, our sister church just down the road here, is having their Rock the Block on October 31st. That starts at 6 p.m., so if you want to uh, participate with them in that, they've invited us to uh, be a part of that, so uh, be there for that. And then the last thing is Haley Pepper is going to be having her baby shower on November 13th from 2 to 4 in the Fellowship Hall. Anything else that we need to announce? Y'all dragging tonight? 5.30 here? Staying here? Leaving? What are y'all doing? 5.30. Don't know. To be TBD. Uh, so youth, you come at 5.30 here at the church and, and meet the drag. Anything else this morning?
job, guys and girls. I think we should clap for them one more time. Good job. All right. For our last song for today, we're going to sing Amazing Grace, hymn number 330. Everyone stand. One, two, four, and five. Special time of this morning worship service, we thank you, Lord, that we can make our offerings and return for all the many blessings that you just blessed us this year by. Bless, bless us with gifts and treasures, and we thank God for each one of you to build our kingdom here on earth. Bless you with your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
pray with me this morning. Father, as we we come to dig into the rich treasure of your word, God, I pray that, God, you would prepare our hearts to receive it. God, that you would break up the fallow ground and that you would make it ready to receive the seed of your truth, God, that it would be fruitful, that it would multiply, God, that it would take root and take hold in our lives. Father, that we would be impacted by the message you have for us today. God, that we would be challenged and, and changed by the truth that we hear in this place today. But God, I pray, oh, I pray, Lord, that we would be moved to be obedient to this word that we hear today. God, that we would be a people that are not simply hearers of the word and thus deceive ourselves, but God, that we would be, in fact, doers of your word. And Father, not that we could receive the glory unto ourselves for this, but that God, you would be magnified, that you would be exalted on high, that your name and your fame and your renown would go into all the earth. God, that you would receive the glory in and through our lives. Let this be said of me. Let this be said of us. Father, we ask and, and we pray these things in the deep name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, as we continue our journey uh, discussing faith. Uh, we've been going through this these last several weeks, and today we're going to look at another example of faith found in the life of Abraham, and I, I want to read this passage in Hebrews, and before we really dig it out, and before we really examine what's being said here, and going back into the Old Testament to look through the story, I, I want to remind us of what the scriptures have already said concerning Abraham and his faith. So let's begin in, in verse 17 of the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll read down through 19, and then I want to take us to a few other scriptures before we begin our journey. Here's what the writer of Hebrews says concerning Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall be your, or your offspring shall be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. So as we've been dealing with faith and we've defined faith according to what the writer of Hebrews calls it, found in verse 1, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, that the reality of that is that we have confidence and assurance in God that if he has said it, that therefore it is going to be because God is faithful, he does not lie. And so we stand by faith, believing that even when we don't see it, even when we can't comprehend it, even when the circumstances of our life seem to contradict it. Even when our feelings seem to betray what we stand in in faith. This is the definition. This is not an all-encompassing definition, but this is the definition that the writer of Hebrews gives us. That we confidently and assurantly stand our ground in faith, believing that God has said it, it is going to come to pass. And as we've been journeying through this, we understand, and as the whole of Scripture speaks to us, that this standing doesn't happen in accordance with our feelings or our circumstances. We do it because that is what God requires of us. In fact, later on in Hebrews, as, as we continued reading, it talks about in verse 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we stand before God in anything outside of faith, we are not pleasing to him. And if we are not Pleasing to him, we are not his. And if we are not his, we do not inherit the kingdom of God. 
So faith is essential. Faith is required. And as we've been going through this journey, we've seen one example of Abraham's faith, and we've talked about it. He received a promise from God, and that promise had many different facets to it. He, he, God had promised that he would be a father of many nations. God had promised that he would go in and they, that his family would possess a land. And he had promised that Abraham himself would have an heir or descendant that would be the birth of this nation that God had promised. So there's three aspects of this. And so God, when he comes to him and tells him this, Abraham believes it. And he trusts it. And he doesn't waver or doubt. And, and we might read that story and think, well, wait a minute. What about Ishmael? Didn't he doubt then? But as we examine that, we saw that that was not the case. God had not told him the means and manner in which all of this would unfold. And so according to their custom, according to what was appropriate 